Hello, everybody. Welcome to art class. Uh, here I am in the art room at Riverside. And, you know, some of you Riverside friends might be missing the art room. It's still here. You know, it'll still be here when you come back. Um, so, last time we had art class, we were talking about character design. I can show you what we've done so far, because these lessons have kind of built into each other. The first one, we drew six or more character designs. And then you picked one of those characters to kind of develop a little more, to draw some emotions or different ways of drawing them. And now, for the final part of this project, we're going to take it one step further, and we're going to put your character into some kind of story. This is the really fun part. So you get to create a story using your character design. It can be like a comic, it can be storybook, or just pictures, or really however you want to do it. Um, you can come up with a whole new way to tell a story with your character. That's great, too. It's good to be creative. Um, so I just want you to kind of make something with your character that tells a little story. All right. I have some examples here. This is from Calvin and Hobbes. I love Calvin and Hobbes books. If you've never read them, you should definitely check them out. Uh, they probably have them in the school library or the local library. They're awesome. But this is what we call like a three panel, like a comic strip. This is like what you'd see in a newspaper. Um, and they usually just tell like one little story or even it's like a joke. Sometimes there's like a, the last panel makes, is like the punchline of the joke that makes you laugh, right? So Hobbes is like, hey, nice mustache. And Calvin, this goofy little kid, he's like, thanks, I made it. It's like, very bushy. What'd you use for the hair? And once he takes off his hat, you see that he, you know, chopped off his hair for the mustache. So it's just kind of a goofy little thing. Um, there's a lot of different things you can do. And then Calvin and Hobbes, they also sometimes have these full page comics. So it's not just three in a row, but it's a bunch of panels going and telling. In this one, it's just telling a story of Calvin and Hobbes are grooving and dancing. And then the punchline, the funny part at the end is his mom and dad are sleeping. He's doing this in the middle of the night. Either he's playing classical music at 78 RPM or I'm still dreaming. And dad says, first thing tomorrow morning, I'm calling the orphanage. Oh, man. So there's just some frustrated parents with Calvin dancing in the middle of the night. So it's also superhero comics, which are pretty cool. Um, and you can see these are not just three squares like the Calvin and Hobbes comic. This is like you can get really creative with how you put the panels. You can even have them kind of come out and like have a little part that comes out over the other panels. As you can see over here, you can see like Superman coming through over to this panel. And then here you see these dots say focal point. So that's showing you that like your eye is going around the page, right? Like each part is where your eye is looking, and you want to think about that. A storybook. Um, so this is a cute little storybook about a stick man who's literally just a man, <laughs> like a stick who runs around. And you can see even a storybook, they're really creative with where they put their pictures. It's not always just a picture at the top with words at the bottom. Like this one is like one page is like that. The next page is kind of broken up and gets your eye moving around. So get creative with how you do that. And those are just a few examples. So I'm going to start making some art too. I'm going to make a little comic um, just to help get you started. And we can just kind of draw together a little bit. Um, and yeah, got a new setup here. So sometimes it's a little tough to figure out how to get this. There we go. OK. I'll get a bigger paper just so you can see a little better. All right. What I used to do when I was a kid, we used to make comics all the time. And we would just take a piece of paper, fold it in half. And sometimes that was it. Sometimes we would just do a comic where this is the cover. And then you have a few panels on the inside, and that's it. That's all you need. But if you want more pages, you just get more papers. You just fold them in half. You don't even need to staple them if you don't want to. You can just have a little book. Like, I have two papers here. Look, it's a little comic book. So that's super easy. Um, I have a, had a lot of students make those, and it's, it's just great. So I think that's probably the best way to do this. That's what I'm going to do here. So... I'm going to make a comic. You can draw with me if you want. I think the front, I'm going to do like a cover for my comic. And I don't have my original drawing with me of my character from last time. So I'm just going to make up a new one for now. Well, actually, I'll use my, I have this character that I designed. 
I really like this guy. He's like a little frog wizard. Um, and I really like him, so I'm going to use that. And I'll put a nice title. And at this point, maybe just you could start drawing. Um, I'll talk a little bit and kind of narrate what I'm doing. But you can kind of get started if you want. Or you can just watch me draw and then you can draw after. That's fine. But I'll probably, I'll probably work on this for about 10 minutes. And then you guys can like really focus and get to work on your own time. Wizard frog. And I'm kind of putting a line around it to make it like pop out. Oh, you know what I'm going to do? i got to make this a little bigger. Now you can see better. Wizard frog. And the cover should be really eye-catching and something really exciting. Like, don't just put your character standing there. Like, show off what's cool about your character, right? Like, make them want to open it up and look inside. Here he's going to be opening up, like, a magic portal just because it's going to look cool and get people's imaginations going. Sometimes when I make comics, I'll make like a, my fake comic company, which I call Marble Comics, kind of a play on Marvel Comics. And they'll put like a little logo. You can make up your own comic company. Like if you've ever read uh, Captain Underpants, they make their own little comics like this, and they have like Treehouse Comics, I think is what it's called. And we'll put like, you know, issue number three. A portal in time. And I'll come back and color this at some point. But I want to get into the actual comic just to demonstrate. So, like, come up with what you want for your story and then figure out how you want to do your frames, all right? Like, or sometimes, sometimes I'll draw the frames first. Like, maybe I want a big one here, okay? And then maybe I'll have, like, a square one here, but then it goes up into a triangle shape like that. And then there's one here like this. And then I'll have an open drawing down here, okay? So I'll set the scene, draw like a little horizon line, and show him walking. And he's walking in a very strange place because you can see the mountains have weird shapes. They don't look like our mountains. So already there's a bit of a story happening. We have our frog is traveling, and obviously he's not on Earth. Just the picture is showing us that he's somewhere very strange. And there's two moons in the sky. Okay. And we can show a close-up on his face, because he's gonna he's gonna think something, alright? Close up on his face here. And I'm going to erase this part a little bit so I can put a thought bubble. A thought bubble is like, it looks like a, you draw a cloud like this, and then it has little dots going down to your character, and that means this is what the character's thinking. Okay, he's thinking, how did I get here? Hmm, how did I get here? So maybe that tells us that he's lost somewhere. And then I'll have him squinting his eyes a little bit, like he's thinking. Kind of the same shot, but you can see some movement in his eyes. Well, that looks strange, so I'm going to fix it. And he'll be going. And this one's going to be a speech bubble. So a speech bubble is like you draw a circle, but you leave a little space open, and you draw lines coming down like that. And he's going, hmm. That means he's saying something out loud. And then our time frog wizard guy 
is going to cast a spell. And I'm going to use this frame because I left it open. And I'm going to draw his arms coming out like this. And he's using his power. And he's creating a portal. All right. And then so on and so forth. You know, I would continue down this page. The way you read a comic, it's just like a regular book. So, um, you know, this is the middle of the page. I'm going to start at the top here, read left to right, left to right, left to right, just like you're reading a book. And then we go back up to this page and read down. Okay? And sometimes I like to have a page that's just the whole picture. They call that a splash page. So this page will be the frog wizard, and he's like going through a time portal. And he's getting all wiggly going through the portal. I haven't really planned out what I'm doing. I'm kind of just having fun. Sometimes I do this with my comics too, where I'm just kind of drawing and making things up as I go, just because I'm like, you know what? I think that would be fun to draw. Maybe I'll do that. Or you can really write out a nice story beforehand too. It's up to you. And here he is swirling through the time portal. And I can add lots of details, lots of colors. Um, I like to think of a comic as I don't want to just focus on just telling my story, but I want each page to be also a cool drawing, right? Think about how can I make this look like a really cool drawing too? Like you don't have to just do the bare minimum of showing your character doing something, but add lots of fun stuff to make it an interesting drawing to look at. Whether that's coloring or what I'm doing is lots of lines. That looks pretty neat. Okay, and I would just keep going. I would make more pages and keep going and going. All right. So um, once again, yours does not have to look like mine. I've been making comics for quite a while. Okay, so um, and and we should celebrate that all of our art looks different, right? We're all different. All of our art's different. That's a good thing. Okay. So just go with the flow, and like usual, just consider this practice. All right. Uh, it does not have to be perfect. Even if it doesn't turn out being how you want it, that's okay. You practiced and you did it. Okay, so just have fun with it. Try out your character, and maybe this is something you're really into. I would, I would really like to see some, some comic artists. All right, maybe this isn't your thing. I don't know, but you got to try it and find out. So, take care, everybody. Um, I do have one message for uh, parents or and students as well. I had a few people who are confused about, do you need to send me your artworks to be graded? Uh, the answer is really not yet. We're not quite sure how we're going to do grading for this yet. So you don't need to send things to me to be graded, but I would still hold on to them. It's just good to keep your stuff. Uh, and if you want to send me your artworks, you definitely can. I love to see your artworks. Uh, some of you have sent it already. I love it. And I'm going to put some of those in like an online gallery so we can all share our art together. All right. Um, so definitely send it if you want to. It's, it's cool to share your art because it's, it's fun to make it on your own, but you want your art to you know go out in the world and do stuff. You want people to enjoy it too, so that's part of the fun. All right, take care, everybody. I can't wait to see what you make. This is going to be cool, so have fun with it. Bye-bye.